moves incoming for this week. We had very big moves on Friday. Tesla ran up to our targets. Palantir's running up. You got NVIDIA. You got the AI sector running up. So we're going to go over a lot of sectors with gold, oil, all A1 analysts. What's to buy? What's not to buy? What's actually going to have some bigger movements? And it might not be in a direction that you want. So we're also going to have to go over the major stock market crash on SP500. That thing that might be coming soon as well. So we got a lot of stuff. Okay. A lot of sectors that's going to be in here. So smash the like button. Subscribe if you are new. We'll also have the crypto sector at the end. Y'all know Bitcoin is booming. Y'all know Ethereum is booming. I told y'all about these levels. They are breaking. We're going to go over that. How I'm looking to play more of these and also the crypto stocks and the miners as well. So stay tuned for that. That will be very big. So smash the like button. Let's get the video over 300 likes within eight hours. That's all I ask. And make sure you comment those stocks down below. We'll also have a comment section at the end, close to the end of the video with the crypto section. Okay. So we're going to be looking over the AI sector first. So NVIDIA is at all time highs, all time highs. Remember, I gave you all a support level at 147.65. If you go down to the five minute chart, you'll see how that pretty much held NVIDIA. We, we were up above it. Then we had this big drop and we just kind of just been touching that this whole way through. And that is still support for tomorrow. So 147.65 is still support. Also, the bond market is closed tomorrow. Tomorrow is a holiday. So just be mindful of that. The bond market is closed. I believe the market is still going to be open, but the bond market is actually going to be closed. So tomorrow is not like a full trading day. So just want to be careful. If you're, if you're trying to look to play some stuff, just kind of know it's not going to be a full day. OK, um, I'm trying to get y'all the section going on here. Yeah. So so NVIDIA is 147.5. Long term shares, there's nothing I want to buy long term shares in this range. We would need a pull down. And guess what? Yesterday was Friday. It finally started that pull down. So you want a little more pull down for me to do any new buys like swing shares, call options and so forth. I don't want to get call options or swing shares when we're already at all time highs. That just doesn't make sense. So we have to wait for a pull down. That's the biggest thing right now. So this support level, you actually want that to break tomorrow on NVIDIA and you want pull down at least for NVIDIA to go below 145. That is when I'll potentially start looking for call options and so forth. Once I give you all the new support that I'll give you all tomorrow after the video moves. But for now, the main thing I'm looking out for is I want support to break and I want NVIDIA to drop. We also sold about a quarter of um, of our NVIDIA shares. Let me show you. We sold. Where is it? Yeah, we sold a quarter of our long term NVIDIA shares right there at 148 for a 29 percent gain. We sold that on Friday because the whole point we bought was for it to go to all time highs. And I feel like a bigger crash is coming in the market. So we're trying to take our profits. OK, so we did sell a quarter of it. So we still have 75 percent left for 29% gain. Amazing, right? Because we bought our long-term shares of NVIDIA in here and now we're enjoying the run, right? We don't need to chase it while it's up. So that's the main thing I'm looking for in NVIDIA. Like I said, if you want to know what I buy and sell every day, private trading live streams, make sure you guys join the team is the first thing in that description, okay? Prices do go up in 24 hours. So yeah, so that's NVIDIA. Very simple. AMD, I'm bearish on AMD. So am I looking to play upside on AMD? No. I actually want AMD to come back down and break the support level at 141.10. Once it does that, I feel like AMD is going down to 120. I am bearish on AMD. Only a certain amount of stocks are actually holding up the indexes, okay? The whole market is not bullish. You see how NVIDIA is at all-time highs, but AMD isn't, right? Do you see AMD close to all-time highs? No. AMD's high was 227. So be very careful in this market. The whole market is not bullish. Only certain stocks are, okay? That is going to be very crucial, and that is also a sign of what's about to come in the market with these bigger pull-downs. So AMD, I'm looking actually looking for it to break here so I can play put options. Long-term shares, I only want long-term shares on AMD below 120. That's the most simplest way. So any shorter term, like scalping wise, there's really nothing I would do on AMD right now. The biggest thing I'm looking out for is once it breaks that support, I'm going to play put options. Then once it goes down to 120, I'll potentially get long term shares in there. That's how I'm looking to play AMD. Very structured. Intel did go to my price target of 25 to 26. Remember, we were calling that all the way back here in like September. Go watch the videos I was making in September. You'll see that. And it hit. So I did give y'all support level at 2585, right? That was our support level that we watching out for Friday. What hit perfect? Look, 2585 there, 2585 here. Support levels hit perfect. Y'all know I only give y'all A1 levels always. Smash that like button. Let's get the video over 300 likes within eight hours. That's all I ask, okay? But yeah, so Intel needs a bigger pull down. Just like NVIDIA, we're a little too high to try to be buying long-term shares or call options when we're already vertical. That's retail. Retail tries to buy calls here. Monsters, we wait for a pull down and then we play it. OK, we take profits on these runs. Right. Last time I played Intel, we took profits on the runs and then it pulled down. Then you play it again. So 
A pull down, I would say, is what you need on Intel. And then to give a level for visual at least below $25, I would want Intel to go down to, okay? So you want that support level to break that $25.85, and you actually want a little pull down because the pull downs are good because they set up for the next play. That's what you want. You want the setups for the next play. AVGO actually tested that resistance around 184.75. Remember, the only thing, I mean 184.85, the only thing I would do on AVGO, which is Broadcom, is if we break that, then I believe we're going to all-time highs, which is like 186, 187. We haven't broke that in about two days. I have been watching it, though. Look, we tested it Thursday. We fell down. We tested it Friday. We fell down again. So once this breaks, AVJ will be at all-time highs, and then that's a potential call option play like scalping to about 186 to 187 on the higher side. So that's a potential scalp option play I'll be looking out for for this week just to give you a hint. I do scalp every morning with options, by the way. So AVGO, that is a potential, and that's pretty much all I'm looking out for on AVGO. Um, Dell is starting to pull down a little bit. You want to watch 143.40. That is a support level on Dell. And if that starts to break, the run might be over on Dell. So really nothing I would do right here on Dell. I wouldn't get call options. I wouldn't get shares. I really wouldn't get anything on Dell right now. The only thing that might be possible is a downside play for Dell to break like 129 or 130. That's something I might do. But that's like more purely of put options. There's really nothing I would do like on the upside right now. In that Dell frame, SMCI, SMCI actually ran up almost here resistance level perfect at twenty-seven dollars on Friday. Now, like I said, look at that, almost hit it perfect on normal hours. It went up to about twenty-six forty, so about sixty-six away from that. Also, pre-market tried to break it, it didn't. It also tested it in pre-market as well, and it fell back down. So the biggest thing with SMCI is it just had a major crash down. Okay, so I'm in no rush. To buy smci we did play it twice we played it once here okay and then we played it again somewhere in here i can't remember or we just played it once no we played it twice so in this run after it dropped we have played it twice i think we got about 10 percent here and i think we got about 15 percent on this day right here so we have played it twice but it's very specific of how we play it they're shorter term they're buying and selling the same day not holding anything right now because SMC hasn't turned bullish yet. We would have to break at least $27 to not even turn bullish, but to show signs that SMCI wants to start going back up. It would have to break that $27 mark, right? So that's like the main thing I'm waiting out for right now. Does it break $27? That's it, right? There's really nothing I would do below $27. Like I wouldn't get put options or nothing like that. I would just wait for it to turn um, more bullish to the upside so I can play the shares and then really start booming it up but it would have to break $27 main day I'm watching out for right now it hasn't done that so I'm just being patient on what I do at SMCI for now okay so that's like the AI sector any stocks I missed let me know in the comment section down below let's go ahead and go over to DJT so DJT let me take this white level off DJT had a support level right DJT has a support level at 2560 if we go down to the five minute chart look at that 2560 of how this acted now Look how beautiful this level was. This is why you never miss a video. After hours on Thursday, it hit that support level perfect. Look at your chart on after hours Thursday. Look at that. Beautiful support hit. The level I gave y'all before it happened. Beautiful support hit. Perfect. And what happened after that? The push off of that support. It never came back down to touch that support until that after hours market. And then it just boomed up off of that. That is a good sign you want to see off DJT for DJT to go back up. And then it had a very nice push on Friday. So the biggest thing we want to look out for on Friday for DJT is, one, you don't want to come back down here. Two, there's also a secondary support that you don't want DJT to break. Secondary support you don't want it to break to really show signs that it wants to go up. And that support is around 29.75. No, so right now you have two major supports to watch out for. Now, would I want to buy DJT in this range? No. It hasn't really shown signs that it actually wants to go back up, okay? Because it tried to go up here and it crashed. This is only a retracement. This isn't a bullish movement. This is just a retracement after a bigger drop. Because literally in like two days, it dropped from this high to this low. It dropped over 40% in two days. So be very careful, right? It's still in that danger type of zone. And it seems like it was buy the rumor, sell the news that we were kind of saying back in here in October. So 29.35, 25.60, two supports. You don't want any of these to break tomorrow. 
if they do, it's just showing more weakness and DJT might actually want to drop down and go down to like $22. So be mindful of that, okay? If it comes back and breaks this $29.35, I'll probably expect DJT to go down to $22. So trying to buy shares or call options is just very risky in this area. You really need DJT to show that it really wants to start pushing for me to feel confident and trying to get shares and so forth. I know everybody wants to go to this to the moon, but we have to be realistic and we have to be understanding what price is actually telling us and not trying to hope and wish and all this stuff. What is actually price telling us? And then we could play that accordingly. It's just not time yet for upside. Okay. Because we've only been going down, down, and we could go down more. So just be careful of that. The biggest thing I'm watching is supports. No clear resistance just yet. If I had to put a resistance level, I would probably put one around 3250. Watch that as resistance if I had to. Okay, so tomorrow, say 3250 is like around here. So watch that area for resistance. So that's it for DJT. That's all I see right now on DJT. Tesla, booming. Tesla hit our target of 320. I told y'all how Tesla works. I told y'all what we were looking out for for Tesla on the earnings play. Don't say I didn't tell you. This is why you smash the like button and get the video over 300 likes in eight hours and comment those stocks down below. We still got a lot of sectors to go on. We still got the comment sector um, to go on as well and the crypto sector. I told y'all, okay? So don't act surprised that you see Tesla at 320. When I told you that is our target for upside is 320 and we are there. We also sold some um, Tesla. We just had to, okay? I, I ain't gonna lie. I just had to sell a little bit of Tesla. I sold about a quarter of my Tesla long-term shares for 64% to gain, okay? So I still have about 75% left. Nothing says you can't take profit on the way up. And I also feel like the market's going to be having a crash down soon. So I want to make sure I lock in those profits so whenever they do crash down, I didn't just hold for no reason, okay? Locking in profits. Like I told y'all, we sold about 25% in NVIDIA long-term shares, 25% in Tesla long-term shares. Tesla's over 64%. And remember how Tesla's up? We also scalp Tesla too. Look, Will Knowledge Tesla call option play. The month strike price I paid, I show you everything on the private trade live streams. This is why I say make sure you guys join the team. I sold half at 10% and I sold the other half all the way at 50%. Even yesterday, you look at Meta calls. They did 40% on Meta calls and we sold a quarter of Coinbase shares for 51%. I think somebody was like, why you always sell 5, 7%? Well, where you are now when I'm taking 40% gains, 50% gains, selling 60% gains of Tesla, 29% gains of NVIDIA, it takes time, right? You always play the optimal play. Whatever gain you get is what gain you get. You don't chase the percentage gains. You chase the optimal play because the better plays you're doing, the money will follow your better plays and it'll just flow, okay? You got to think differently as a monster and not retail. But yeah, make sure you guys join the team. First in the description, new website. Make sure you go read it. They're very, very valuable information to make sure it fits you the best. We always have elite, elite year and lifetime memberships available for you. Prices do go up in about 24 hours. You'll see it in 24 hours, probably around tomorrow, Monday, around this time, you'll prices will be up. So make sure you join. You get access to the Discord and the private trade live streams and everything like that. All right. So let's go back to Tesla. So Tesla's at 320. That was a target price. Okay. Tesla has did its job. Remember I told y'all the last earnings, it pulled down retracement and then the bigger move came in. What do we get off Tesla? The pull up, the retracement, and then the bigger move came in to our target price of 320. So everything on Tesla has happened. I even told y'all I was looking to scalp 302 if the movement continues. And that's it. That remember that Tesla play I showed you? I literally spelled it out, showed you, and everything happened. So what we're gonna do now is take your whole levels off of Tesla. Okay. Tesla did hit the target. So now that Tesla hit the target, you can't be chasing the next target. It has to form. Okay. And we do have a resistance on Tesla right around this area of about 331.15. That is our resistance level on Tesla stock, okay? If I have a new target, I don't see it just yet. That was the only beautiful target that I see at 320. That's why we start taking some profits because you, you might start seeing resistance in this area. You also have support right around 310.70-ish. 310.70. So, what am I looking at for now on Tesla stock? Do I want any more long-term shares in this area? No, no, no. We are too vertical. Too vertical, and we're up over 70%. So nothing, and my, mind you, Tesla's my number one holding position. There's also some stocks that I want to buy more of that we're going to go over as well. But from this low, right, from the low before the earnings run, to the high, this thing ran, oh, hold up, I did it the wrong way. Just to show y'all, this is very vertical. 
it, this thing ran about 55% in about two weeks, two and a half weeks. That is a very violent run. So no, I don't want to buy any more long-term shares here. I am taking profit here. This is why you buy when it matters. So you enjoy the profits on the way up. Do I want call options? No. Do I want swing calls? No. You need Tesla to pull down. Calls and stuff right now are too elevated. You need pull down. Do not chase price. That is having FOMO. There's no reason having FOMO if you're consistent per week with the strong strategy that I teach you guys when you join the team. We never chase anything. We're consistent. We win every week. We don't need to be chasing stuff. And why we win is because we buy when it's optimal. We buy when it's down. So when it goes up, we chase it. We uh, enjoy the profits. I was about to say chase profit. Crazy. But yeah, 310 support, 331 resistance. And what I'm looking out for is I want to see one, how we act at resistance, two, how we act at this, I mean, how we act at support, and how we act as resistance. Okay. You want pull down though. For me to buy calls and so forth, I want pull down on Tesla. Point blank, period. Do I want more long term shares here? No. So, what I'm looking out for Tesla is the pull down. Pretty simple. We are very high right now. We already hit our targets. We're up a lot. We need pull down now for the next big plays to form. Okay. Pretty simple. Palantir stock is still booming. We have support at 51.54.50. We're just all we're going to do now is change the support level at around $57. And the only thing I'm waiting out for Palantir, I know it's booming. I really don't care about that. I don't have FOMO. I don't feel like I'm missing anything just with this little extra push. Remember I told y'all Palantir all-time highs is going to push. We're there now. So $57 is support. The only thing I'm watching out for on Palantir is pull down. That's it. I want a down day. It's just too high to buy in shares or call options or anything like that. I think once it has that pull down, the pull down might be a little violent. So just be careful of trying to buy at these high prices. I'm not. I won't pull down. I want the support to break at $57. Hopefully tomorrow starts to pull down and um, it'll, it'll load up for the next big play of Palantir. But for right now, it's very high and I won't pull down. SoFi stock is booming up. It's about to hit my target of thirteen fifty. Remember I told you all about SoFi shares. I wanted it to go down below eleven fifty, so I just didn't buy it. But now it's booming up very good and it's about to hit the target. So that's very good. Remember, I don't have to play everything, but I point, you shoot, and I give you all amazing analysts to kind of understand how the market is going to be. But look at that big push on SoFi. Pretty self-explanatory, and we knew SoFi was going to go up because we've been calling SoFi to 1350 for a minute, right? His support perfect. Everything's pretty much perfect on SoFi. So now that it's booming up, I'll go ahead and let it go up to 1350 as expected. It does have support at about 1250. And do I want to buy SoFi stock in here? No. So I would just watch support around 1250. Let that target hit around 1350, and just wait for the next secondary pull down. And that's pretty much it on SoFi. I'm just letting it kind of move right now. And and then once it's a target, I'll wait for a pull down somewhere in this area for SoFi stock. And then that might lead up to a next play. But for now, SoFi stock doing good, going to 1350. So it's still got a little more room on the upside, I believe. And then it has support around 1250. And that's pretty much it on the SoFi stock front. Okay. Clove is pulling down. We have support at 320. I would say just watch that. It did start pulling down after the earnings. I also told you all to wait for earnings. And good thing we did because it just kind of dropped very violently. So 320, I will watch that. It's still technically in bullish territory, So, but it would have to stop at the support level. So the biggest thing tomorrow is, does Clove stop at 320? That's it. Once it does, then we can look at it accordingly. But there's no shares play right here. There's no option play right here. There's really nothing because you don't even know if it wants to stop at 320 yet. So watch that support level for now, and that's it. Very simple. I like to keep the videos very simple, straight to the point. Funware is pulling down, right? Funware is in bearish territory ever since it broke that $7 mark, like I told y'all. We didn't want that to break. Since it broke, it's in bearish territory right now, and the only thing it's been doing is dropping. So there's really nothing to go over on Funware. I would say probably just stay away from it until something else gets a little clear out of that range. Stocks I want to buy heavy and also bigger call options. Nike. I've been talking about Nike for a while. Okay. I don't think Nike will stay down here for long. Excuse me. Got allergies running. I don't think Nike will stay down here for too much longer. So I am looking to buy heavy shares of Nike, long-term shares of Nike. Um, I think the leaps will do very good. And I think Nike should easily get back up to the 130s to 150s. That's a lot of gains just off the shares alone. That's minimum 70 to about 100% gains. And then the call options are going to do minimum 200, 300% gains. So very big plays. I'm looking out for Nike. Also on Disney, more long-term shares, um, leaps as well. that I think would do very good. The only thing about Disney is they have earnings on Thursday, November 14th. So what I'm hoping is I'm hoping they crash off the earnings. Remember this one crash they had right here? That's what I'm hoping they get off earnings. I don't want them to push up because I don't have my leaps yet. 
but I do have long-term shares of Disney, okay? But I hope they have that bigger crash down. That would be so beautiful, and they just crash. They just drop. I'll buy the crap out of that, okay? But if they go up, I'll probably play the earnings. I have the shares, so we'll be up anyway. But yeah, that's the thing I'm looking out for Nike. I'm looking to buy more shares, and it broke that resistance level at 97.75. So I think Nike's going, I mean, I think Disney's going up to about $100. It has a little more push to the upside, I believe. But yeah, they have earnings on Thursday, so that's the biggest thing I'm kind of waiting out for it is what happens on earnings also paypal i want more shares of this and i also want leaps of paypal as well i think paypal can easily get back up to let's see real quick easily 140 right at least minimum it can get to 140 and from where the shares are that we recently bought to where the minimum price is that's about 70 percent gain on the higher side and that's nowhere near the all-time highs okay now i think paypal could make it back up to the all-time highs it's just going to take some time maybe within the next five years or so and just for reference five years sounds like a lot but from where we are now to the all-time highs that's over 274 percent gains so say it took you five years to do that that's about 50 percent compounded per year that's still doing five times the national average of 10 percent like the spy usually gives you just by holding paypal so still very strong i like it where it is now and also, let's go ahead and go over the makeup industry real quick. Then we'll go over the crypto sector. So, Ulta, I still wanted to go below 300. So, still waiting for that. I'm being patient with it. Elf did start a kind of boom up, trying to get a little vertical. I don't want to buy it just yet. It's been crashing down for a long time, over a year. So, I just don't think, well, actually not a year, some months. I just don't think it's ready yet because it just kind of started going up from earnings. So, it's not really a normal type of push. It's like an earnings push. And usually, earnings pushes are short-lived. So that's the only thing, but I do like Elf in that makeup industry. I also like EL. EL is still kind of bearish though, and they've been bearish for a minute. So the thing on EL is I'm gonna catch the swings. Kind of like Intel has the swings. I want to catch those swings on EL. I just don't think they're ready yet. So I'm being patient on pretty much the whole makeup sector right now. And also the energy sector, guess where in phase is? Remember, I told y'all I wanted in phase below $70. We are there now. So now what we need on in phase is we need to find support. Enphase is very low. Look, we came all the way back down from Enphase prices of back to 2020 of Enphase prices. So now I'm just waiting for it to build support. We do have support, I would say, like around $66 ish. So you could put support there to see how that acts if you want to. Let's put it $66 is right here. So see how that acts tomorrow for support right around that six six dollars it did hit it on friday and it kind of bounced from that so i would say watch six six dollars but it is below 70 now i'm just kind of waiting for my buy to form it's in the area it's doing pretty good all the energy sectors like fslr they're dropping if you look at like sunrun it's dropping as well right the energy sector is not ready to boom up yet so i'm being patient on those but i think they will have a place sometime soon and remember i told y'all for sun one we got earnings so you wait and it's been crashing before that and you see i was going to the downside that's why i was saying in phase is kind of like a hint of what might happen in that kind of energy sector that's why i was watching in phase first and aka you see this baby crashing down to the floor and oh gold 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 man so gold member bearish territory it just hasn't moved out of its range ever since that drop right around the earnings so we just have to be patient with gold if you look look it really hasn't moved out this range. It's kind of just been traded sideways. So gold is still bearish in my eyes. It's still on the downward side. We'll kind of see how it wants to move. The only thing I really have on gold is support at 1722. Other than that, there's really not much to do in this range. And also you see how GLD had a bigger crash too because it's in bearish territory. So just be mindful. For now, we're just going to assume lower prices until we start breaking key levels on the upside. I don't have that key levels on the upside just yet. But I'm just assuming down prices that have the support. There's really nothing I would do on gold right now in this range. It just hasn't moved the last three days. Okay, so I'm being patient on it and waiting for it to kind of form. Then you have oil. It literally came back down and touched that $50 level. This is OXY, by the way. I'm still bearish on oil. I'm still looking for it to go down. And I'm waiting for it to break this $50 mark. And then I'm going to get put options for OXY to go down to 48 which I've been saying for a long time now. But look how it dropped. And it stopped at that support level again, and it bounced off that support area. A1 levels, make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe if you are new. I appreciate it. But um, yeah, so $50 level, waiting for that to break, waiting for OXY to go down to 48 They also have earnings on Tuesday, so we'll see how the earnings go. I might just get puts on it. We'll see. But I do believe they'll be going down to 48 Unless earnings come out good and they boom up off that, then we'll readjust. But for now, I'm bearish on it, looking for the downside. And yeah. Let's go over... Oh. Apple stock, Apple stock is still no man's land. For me to play Apple stock, it would either break support at 216.40 or 
or it would either come up and break resistance at 236.70. It has to do one of those. That's when I think the bigger play on Apple will come. Let me repeat. Once it breaks one of those areas, that's when I feel like the bigger play on Apple will come. And what do I mean by that? This is why I'm putting it close to the end of the video. That is when I think the bigger directional move, directional move, will come out of Apple once those levels break. This is a directional move, right? Even on the downside, because we can profit on the downside too. This is a directional move. That is what I want to play. Right now, Apple is just sideways. So there's nothing I would do on Apple right now, but once one of those levels breaks, it's going to be game time. Trust me. So Meta, Meta's uh, pretty stalled. We did play Meta for calls. I think I showed y'all that. Right. No, we played Tesla calls, 50% gains. Yeah, we played Meta on Thursday. We played call options. Y'all know that big candle y'all see on Thursday? We actually played that and we got 40% gains. So say you put $1,000 here, you made $400. Say you put $1,000 here, you'd made like $300 if you average it out. You'd been like $700 in like two days. The whole year the membership would have been paid for because y'all know how the uh, the member, the yearly is like eight ninety. You would have made that in probably one, two days. And the whole year is free to be on the team. These prices are so low comparable to the value that you get. It's ridiculous. And prices are going up in 24 hours. I don't think I said that. I think I did, though, yeah. But Meta, there's really nothing right now on Meta, right? So, yes, I want Meta to go down. But it, you see how we played the upside? If the upside is clear, I still play it. We play all directions. So, I just still want Meta to go down, if I'm being honest. I really don't like the upside for Meta. It's right at all-time highs. Microsoft, I wanted to break 405.50, looking for the trade down. If you notice, Microsoft has not its all hot, has not its had little bit of go goodbye. Meta has not its ugh. Microsoft has not hit all time highs, but Meta has. That's why I say some it's just only a certain stocks that are keeping the SP 500 up right now. It's not the whole market. The whole market is not bullish. Only certain stocks like Nvidia, Tesla not at all time highs, but it's booming. It's helping it keep it up, right? So a lot of stocks are not all all time highs. Microsoft hasn't hit all time since July. So the only thing I'm watching support bearish on Microsoft, looking for it to go down a lower prices. Netflix is pretty and no man's land and also Google. No man's land. There's nothing I would do with Google. Actually, I do want to kind of trade Google to 182. That's a potential scalp. So hint, hint. And then um, Amazon might be a potential downside to like 207. That's a potential scalp play as well. But let's go ahead and go over to the Bitcoin, man. So Bitcoin finally broke the 72,100 level. And when I told y'all, once that level breaks, it's been trying to for about seven, eight months. We're going to be in bullish territory. And guess what we are now? Bullish territory. Okay. Bitcoin is booming. We bought more Bitcoin at 68,000, by the way. That's why I say make sure you join the team because we buy cryptos as well. So the new play we bought on Bitcoin is already up 70, 17%. I know a lot of people thought 68,000 was high on Bitcoin. Oh, I don't want to buy. We actually did. Okay. So that is up. Our RKB shares are up. Coinbase shares are up. And Ethereum is up. So Bitcoin, I still want pull down on Bitcoin for the next play. I still want Bitcoin to pull down for my next buy on Bitcoin. So I do still plan on buying more Bitcoin and I just want the pull down. So for right now, I'm enjoying the profits. We bought more at 68,000. I can show you here. You see right here, we bought more shares at 68,000. My first take profit was 74,000. It's already at 8,000. And I still ha I haven't even took profit yet. Okay. And then over the weekend, this weekend, we actually bought more Ethereum, a new one at 28,000. My target is over 4,000. So we bought more of Ethereum at 28,000. Then if you go look at Ethereum right now, which we're about to, so Bitcoin, I won't pull down. Very simple. That's the thing I want right now. And then look at Ethereum. Come on now. Once it broke that resistance level, I told you I was going to get an Ethereum. So we bought more at 28,000 right when it broke. I thought that's when it was going to get very violent to the upside. And we're already up about 14% on our shares that we just bought. Um, We bought it at 28,000. When did we buy that, by the way? Oh, I think we bought it on Thursday, I believe, on Ethereum. Right when it broke, which I told you I was going to do, and we're at 14%. Look at that violent run that we're having, and it hasn't even started yet. This is the beginning, okay? I'm looking for it to go all the way to 4,000. So it's still got a whole long way to go, and I'm looking to buy more of it. I just need a pull down. It's very violent right now, right? There's no point in chasing the violent run. Then if you look at like Solana, Solana's getting violent too. Our average is 156. We're up a lot. I'm looking to play Solana again. I told y'all it's going to go well above 200 on the next cycle. We're at 206 right now. And it's only started way more room to go on Solana to the upside. But guess what? I need the pull down. So this is when what it when it matters of when you buy stuff. Right. We bought when it mattered. All our buys are low. Right. So we're up 50, 60 percent gains. We have we have swings on Bitcoin that are up like 60 percent gains. Solana, we're up right now. Our average is 156. 
So we're up about 31% on Solana right now. So we're not chasing the run. We bought when it mattered and we're enjoying the profits as the run goes higher. Okay. That's the whole thing with the crypto market. You have to know what areas to buy in. So whenever it's booming, you're enjoying the profits and you're not chasing the profits like retail would. So I need pull down on Solana. Even Dogecoin is booming up. Right, Dogecoin booming. We call it Dogecoin a lot, though. We need Dogecoin to pull down. I'll give you all some levels on Dogecoin. I just kind of want to see how the crypto kind of ends for the weekend and how we move on Monday. And then the Monday video will be big because that's when the big levels will come in, uh, probably for the crypto side. Okay. But Coinbase, come on now. Y'all know I love Coinbase. It will get vertical, man. And look at Coinbase booming. I told y'all above 300. The cycle only just started and we're almost at 300. This stock goes vertical. I tried to tell y'all. This is a vertical stock. Look how vertical this moves. Vertical it is, okay? It is very vertical. And just wait till the next earnings comes in when their earnings booms up because everybody that's trading Bitcoin right now on Coinbase and all the fees they're making. Very vertical stock. Crazy vertical. So we bought around 166. We are up over 62% on our Coinbase shares. We sold a quarter of it, okay? Because the whole reason I bought in the first place was to be in a vertical. So there's no point of holding for greed. We are selling some. We sold a quarter. And then the next time I probably sell is once we get to 300. So we still got a little more room to go. Do I want to buy more Coinbase? I do. Okay. I just want it to pull down. We just haven't had a pull down. This was a pull down. I should have bought um, I should have bought the calls in here. I did it. I had the share. So I'm pretty much just chilling. Okay. But I do want to buy more on the pull down. Very vertical. Pretty much chilling on it right now. MSCR is vertical. MSCR is actually not a bad area to get in. Um, I'm thinking about buying MSCR tomorrow or Tuesday, somewhere in this area. It's actually not bad, and it's not as vertical as Coinbase is right now um, with this past week. So MSCR is not that bad. I am looking for potentials on it. Then also Hood, I'm looking for potentials on it as well. It's not that bad. I feel like Coinbase is just crazy vertical right now, but Hood is getting vertical. It's just not as bad as like Coinbase is right now. Coinbase is like crazy vertical right now. But Coinbase, I'm also looking to get in. Then also the miners, I'm also looking to play the miners as well. Like Hut, maybe Mara. Uh, Mara gets decent a little bit. And then maybe even Riot as well. Riot is breaking that resistance level. So Riot is getting a little more interesting to me now that it's breaking that $12.40. So stay tuned for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a very big levels video, but I know the video is around 32 minutes. I'm not trying to keep the video too long today. But the miners are going to be good as well. We went over so far. Yes, let's go over the nuclear side. LTBR is starting to inch its way up. Remember, I told y'all it was a four day drop. We literally had to start pushing that day. We are starting to push a little bit slower, but we are pushing. OK, that is a good sign. But you kind of want to push a little more. Nothing says yet that we want to get out this range. So I would probably say wait a little bit. Also, Celsius. I'm looking to play Celsius, but it's not the time yet. It's literally broke support on Friday at 29.65 and it's dropping. So not the time to play uh, Celsius yet. Also, Boeing. Boeing still dropping. They have earnings, by the way, next week on Friday. So that's going to be big. But we did play Boeing. We bought shares here. and We sold it for profit, about 30% gains. And I'm looking to play it again, actually. Okay. The China stimulus news kind of helped it push up. I'm looking to play it again, but it just hasn't found support yet. So the main thing I'm watching for is support. There's no real clear level of support. The only support that I would really be watching is like around 88.70, and we're kind of far from that, so that's pretty much it. Also, Boeing, I'm looking for a nice big swing on Boeing to the higher side. I feel like it should be starting sometime within the next couple months, so I am looking to potentially build that shares play. Maybe call options, I'm 50-50 with calls, but shares play to that higher side on Boeing that I think might be starting in the next couple, within like four months or so. So I'm looking to build that position within that time frame and then have that vertical Boeing move. I think one might be coming soon on Boeing. So we went over a lot of things. I know the video is long. Also, the bond market. I'll be buying some bonds uh, tomorrow, extra bonds. So some more TOT. I think that's going to 140. And also some more TMF. I think that's going well above 200. So I'll be buying some more bonds tomorrow for Shurskis. That's what I'll be doing. Then also, let's watch our comments real quick. NEO is pretty stalled, and they have earnings coming up. So there's nothing I would do on NEO, if I'm being honest. PayPal, we did talk about PayPal, TLT. I am looking for big TLT calls. It might be time for that soon, actually. Root, this is insurance, right? It's too vertical. It's nothing to play on Root, so there's nothing I would play on Root right now. The price is just, don't be so intrigued that price is jumping like this, and now you want to buy it. Why would you want to buy it so high after you could have bought down here? So if you are trying to buy down here, you shouldn't be trying to buy up here. This is just this is just retail, right? Don't have FOMO just because it's going up. This don't interest me at all, and there's really not a play on it. So just be careful of stuff like that. We don't chase stuff ever. CrowdStrike, I really don't like CrowdStrike. There's really nothing I would play to it. I don't know where to exit. I wouldn't know where to enter. 
this is just a retracement after this big crash that it's had, and it's about to come back to its next earnings. So just be careful. CrowdStrike might reverse on that. Eli Lilly is LLY, right? Yeah. Eli Lilly is pretty stalled. It hasn't moved, I would say, since like June, and there's really nothing I would do with it. Okay, because I'm very strategic. I use the same strategy or everything. I'm a simple trader and seeing stuff like this just doesn't interest me. I'd rather play something else that's a little better. So Eli Lee, there's nothing I see on it. Uber, there's I only see downside on Uber. So I would say if Uber starts breaking this support, that might be time. I wouldn't mind getting some put options on that. If it breaks like 69.10, that might be time to get put options for Uber to go down to the low 60s. So that's something I would do. Uh, we did go over NVIDIA. Eli Lilly. Thoughts on Fidelity. Fidelity. What's the tickets over for Fidelity? Uh, 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 uh. I don't see it on here. But yeah, whenever you write the thing, just put the ticker symbol next to it so it could be a. I can check it pretty quick. And other than that, that's it. So thank you guys for being part of the team. Oh, SP 500 has no levels. Okay. I'll have shorter term levels, but I'll put that whenever we go live. In a private trading live stream. That's why I say just make sure you guys are on the team. But we are very high. Um, and I am expecting a bigger crash down on SP500 sometime soon. So it just, I just don't like the upside right now with SP500. Like I said, some stocks are up, some aren't. I just really don't like the upside. So just be careful with that. And also news, we have no news on Monday. But like I told y'all, Monday's a bank holiday. So the bond market will be closed and so forth. Monday probably won't be just a clean trading day. It's not a real day to me because of the banks are closed. So Tuesday, we have no news either. And then I'll update you guys news for the later on in the week which starts on Wednesday with CPI, okay? Um, yes, yeah, so make sure you guys join the team. First in the description, prices go up in 24 hours. Make sure you read the whole website. Also read the message that I got here, right here for you. It'll help you out a lot. And then follow me on Instagram at Will.Knowledge. Make sure you guys run it up. And always remember, not a recommendation to buy or sell anything, just for educated purposes only. So do not trade anything you see or hear the video. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye.